Hi, and welcome to the heart of art. My name's Carl Christian, and I can't wait to show you the aspiring artist, New York City. Stick with me over the next half hour, and I'll introduce you to some of the coolest and most creative people living and working in New York today. No matter what you're into, New York has always been and will always be the best place on the planet to get your career started in the arts. And you can be sure we'll find someone here in New York, the heart of art, to tell you what you need to know to follow your dreams. Now with so many different kinds of artists, there's no way I could show you them all myself. Luckily I've got some help. First up is Jason Curry. Jason's our connection to the downtown scene. He's also a rock musician and he's got the insider's edge to the music industry. In fact, Jason's on the other side of Times Square, about to meet an exciting new musician on her way to the top. Here we are, Times Square. We're going to go up to the boathouse to see Erin Hill in Central Park. She's playing a harp. It's her survival job. Come on, let's go catch the one nine. Scarlet genius or what? I feel guilty for this mystery, this windfall. Oh, it's good to be tough, yeah. Grandma would do. Oh, yeah. You know, a little scuff just means your desk is on the move. Oh, yeah. 
this girl rocks. Now, one of the things you have to do when you come to New York is check out what's happening in the park. From rock and roll to Shakespeare in the park to opera, there's something for everyone and almost all of it is free. Next up, we have our Broadway insider, Eric Scotto. He's on 43rd Street. Let's see what Eric's up to. Hi, I'm Eric Scotto, and I'm here in front of the Henry Miller Theater, where You're in Town the Musical is currently running. You're in Town is one of this season's most critically acclaimed smash hit musicals. You know, Broadway is synonymous with the New York arts, but you might not know how many different kinds of artists it takes to make a Broadway show. You got the set designer, the costumer, the playwright, the composer, the choreographer. The list goes on and on. Today we're going to focus on a key group of artists called the Broadway Gypsies. These are the uh, people that go from show to show and make up the majority of the Broadway cast. Now we call them Gypsies because they're constantly on the move. Whether they're working in regional theaters or on Broadway or national tours, you got to go where the jobs are. Today we're going to meet Kirsten Wyatt, a Gypsy currently employed in Urinetown the Musical. Let's hop the A Express up to Inwood, which is a uh, residential neighborhood at the tip of Manhattan where Kirsten lives. Where'd okay. you come from? Um, well, I went to school in Cincinnati at the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music, a.k.a. CCM. Right. And, um, but I was born in West Virginia. I have to give, like, credit to my father. We were driving to a voice lesson, and we were talking about that, you know, what I wanted to do, and I remember saying, I was like, you know what, Dad, I think I should probably just go major in, like, English or teaching or, you know, something else, and then I'll do this on the side for fun, and... I was like, it's really what I love doing, but you know, it's just, it's too risky. And my dad was like, are you crazy? He was like, you're 17, why don't you go for it? What did you have to do to get in? Did you have to I had to dance. I think I had to sing two songs and a mo I had to do a monologue. Then I had to go take a theory test. Ooh. Yeah, which was always fun, a music theory test. Right. But I was actually really lucky because I'd always played piano. People come here thinking, oh, I'm a fabulous actress and that's all I have to do. Well, it's a business. One of the great things I thought Cincinnati did for me was um, create, or they showed me what my package was, you know? Everyone has something to offer. Right. But you have to package it in, in a, an appealing way. I love New York. I really jive with the whole intensity of it all, you know? And yes. uh, the pressure. I thrive on pressure. Yes. A little too much sometimes. And you've lived in, um, you've worked in New York City. I have. Since you've been here. I've worked as a temp and um, <laughs> I waited tables, um, but I've also worked on the Broadway, which Great. is nice. Great. What yeah. did you do? Um, my Broadway debut was in New York Good Man Charlie Brown, and I was a standby. And which that means? means um, I stood by for, there were two women in the show, Lucy and Sally, uh, and I, st I was the offstage, just in case emergency person. It is like one of the hardest jobs, I think, on Broadway, Why? Sw um, swinging and standing by, all of that, because you don't have the luxury, first of all, like creating the role, you have to be in the moment and really react, And because if you go up there and try to like copy what somebody else does, right. it's crap, like everyone can see right through it. Right. How many shows a I week mean, do they do? We do eight shows a week. You've right. done a lot of regional stuff, right? Yeah. Should you got to see a lot of parts of the country? or I have. To get those jobs in different places, do they all audition out of New York? Yes. A lot of actors come to New York and just pick up backstage, um, which is our trade paper. Right. Um, and they just start reading and going to open calls. With my agent, my agent calls me and says, I have an appointment for you. It's going to be at 4.15 at such and such in place. So I can get there at 4.15, go in, do my audition. And you're sure to be seen. And I'm sure to be seen. You come in and you sing what you have prepared. You're like, I have a book of music. And in my book, I have lots of different kinds of music. I, I try to make it my rule to never learn music just for a specific audition. What do you do to get an agent? They send out their headshots and their resumes to, I mean, you pick up, I don't know where you get the list of agents, I guess the Ross Report or something. I think you can get it at most newsstands. Yeah, a Ross knowledge. Report. Maybe I'm crazy. Currently, I am uh, vacation swinging for Urinetown. You know, I love what I do, 
But there are just certain shows where you're like, I am so cool. <laughs> I'm so fortunate just to make my living as an actress, you know? Which you're I doing mean. a great job of. Yes, thank you. It's cool to know that you don't have to just be the headliner on Broadway to be able to do that. Absolutely not. Do you have any big old good advice for anybody? Be yourself. Be true to yourself. That's, that's not the, the what, first time we've heard that. That's the most important thing you have to offer, you know? So, it's just what, I mean, everybody's so unique and individual and special, and to try to fit into, like, a mold or be like somebody else, you're just telling yourself short. And isn't that what life's all about? It's, like, really finding out who you are and living to your fullest potential. And, you know, so if I can do that being an actress, that's, like, a dream come true. I'm standing in front of the Hotel Chelsea, one of the oldest and most famous hotels in the city. Built in 1833, the hotel has been home to such great artists as Arthur Miller, Sarah Bernhard, and Dylan Thomas. Now you probably know that New York is the home to great theater, but what you probably didn't know is that the film and television industry make up a huge part of New York's economy. You never know when you're going to run into a film crew or your favorite television actor filming a scene right in your neighborhood. Well, Scott Tucker is our connection at TV and Film. Let's see what Scott's doing. Scott, where are you right now? Hi, I'm Scott Tucker, down in one of the most exciting arts communities in the city. Located in Brooklyn, this neighborhood is called Dumbo, which is short for Down Under the Manhattan Bridge Overpass. Just a few years ago, attracted by the large spaces and low rents, artists began to move to this part of Brooklyn. Dumbo went from empty warehouses to thriving studios, and today it's home of some of the most renowned artists in the city. One of those artists is Julian Lalzama. Over the last decade, the digital revolution has totally changed the art of filmmaking. Julian is a part of the rising wave of digital filmmakers. Today, all a young filmmaker needs is a Mac, a DV Pro Cam, and a lot of talent to realize their vision in a one-man studio. Let's go meet Julian down by the East River in between the Brooklyn and Manhattan bridges near his studios, Primal Digital. I'm sure I learned something in my art classes, but I, I never uh, I tended to come to better uh, realizations late at night doing my own thing or with friends coming up with ideas. Interlochen's in northern Michigan. I went there for one year during high school, junior year of high school. I was excited. I've always been into sound experimentation, but with video I came across it, just uh, getting a video camera um, one day, I started videotaping my lizards and I videotaped them in my mom's plants and I realized through the, the video I could fool the eye into thinking that these, these lizards were like in the wild or whatever with this crazy music. And so I just saw the power of it like transforming reality basically. So my mom was more the uh, traditional art kind of lover, and my dad was more of a digital, abstract, theorist, artificial intelligence kind of guy. So after I graduated from Emerson, uh, I decided to, uh, to open an event space. Boston was, I couldn't really go any further in Boston, it's sort of a tight community, uh, seems like you can only go so far in Boston. Uh, there's a feeling when I get off the train and, and come into Dumbo, it's, uh, it's peaceful and it uh, allows me to think and work. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's different than Williamsburg in that uh, a lot of the artists here, they operate under closed doors. Williamsburg's maybe a little more of a social scene. Primal Digital was kind of an extension of uh, previous undertakings. I just sort of learned what I wanted to do, what I didn't want to do. Right now I'm working on a movie called The Naked Feminist with Louisa Achille from Australia. So the vision for me is just to be able to basically like facilitate people's dreams, whether they're my own or other people who are bringing them to the table. I can't think of any, any companies like Apple that make it so easy to uh, to use this amazing technology like QuickTime. I use Final Cut Pro, I use Pro Tools, and uh, any number of Adobe products. If, if, you, if people want to get a good product, they still need to work with creative talent and everyone kind of wants to do 
everything themselves, but getting together a team of creative minds is always uh, crucial. To me, having uh, Primal Cinema was sort of a natural extension of what I do. It's the whole vibe of sitting in a room with people and watching each other's films and sometimes the directors would come and talk about their films. Usually for Primal Cinema I gather some outside curators. Um, Nicholas Lockheimers of Pixel RGB was uh, help, very helpful in, in making it happen when I started out. Uh, I used a woman, Ana Agostino, for a while, who uh, was with some surrealist filmmakers from Italy. I work on a show called Dora the Explorer. It's a great crew. I really like working with the people there. It's a nice department. Dora the Explorer. One of my heroes is Mark Mothersbaugh from Devo, and now he's doing music for Rugrats and all these different TV shows, Pee Wee's Playhouse and stuff. So I'd love to get into doing music for children's television or continue editing with uh, children's television. So I definitely think Nickelodeon is part of the program, as long as they're willing to put up with me. I'd say start working while you're in school and um, work for some big companies so you get an idea of what it's like in the big companies and help other people out with their work. Otherwise you only you live inside a vortex, a bubble. So I think it's important to work for other companies uh, before starting anything yourself. Hey, I'm back. I just took the downtown train to Washington Square Park, which is located in the middle of the NYU campus. Now, this place is a magnet for artists of all kinds. On any given day, you can catch a poetry reading, jam session, comedians, you name it. This place is like a big, free outdoor rehearsal space. Another famous New York institution we want to tell you about is the Joffrey Ballet, which is located just a few blocks from here on 6th Avenue. Our uptown arts guy, Lesser Ehrlich, is going to introduce us to a young Colombian dancer who's turning his dream of becoming a professional into reality. Hi, my name is Les Olig. I'll be your uptown arts guide. We often forget how important our freedoms are, especially in a country as vast as this one, but our next guest never will. He's originally from Colombia, but now a scholarship student at the Joffrey School of Ballet right here in Greenwich Village. Diego Cato is thrilled each day to study his craft in the heart of art. How does it feel to be in New York? Free. I don't feel... If there's something you want to do, you can do it. If you want to take a ballet class, you can. If you want to take class all day, you can. You can go anywhere you want. I feel very free here. My country is a little... I don't know how to say it. It's a little violent. If there are certain places you want to go, you can't go until later. You can't take class all the time. You can't see shows because they don't exist. You can't do as many things there as you can here. Here, sometimes there's just not enough time in a week to do all the things you want to do. I'm 22. I've been dancing six years. I started dancing when I was 16, right before my 16th birthday. My sister was a principal dancer with Kali Ballet. And one day, she asked me if I wanted to take a class to see if I liked it. I took a class and it gave me such a rush. I played a lot of sports and I liked this one because it was a lot more challenging than the others. So I decided, all right, I would try to dance. My sister was living here in the United States and she said to me, do you want to come to New York? Sure. And I came to New York and I took class at Steps for two months. I was told there was a really good school called Joffrey where I might get a scholarship. They said I should audition and I was able to enter the summer program. 
I danced in the summer program, and then after I finished the summer program, Ellie asked me if I wanted to dance in his company. And that's where I am now. I feel it within me. I feel ballet deep within me. I feel... For me, I only dance for me. I dance for me. I want to dance for myself always. I like to dance the classic ballets. It's my passion. I like to dance... Corsair, Black Swan, Quixote. I feel they show strength. I don't know, maybe because I'm Latino. I like things like that. I have two favorite dancers. Carlos Acosta Jr. and Jose Manuel Carreño. They are my stars. What do you like best about the city? That I can go to a lot of ballet events. It helps me and makes me feel great. When I go see ABT or New York City Ballet, I go to class the next day with much more excitement. The people, all of them live in different worlds. They're all on, I don't know, like different planets. Their lives here are a little frenzied. A little, no, but it makes me feel good. I love that I could go see ABT and see the great dancers and to know that I would be able to take class with them someday. I've already done that at Steps many times. And that's the best thing, to be able to take class with them and learn by watching what they do. What do you think of Times Square? The first time I saw Times Square, I said, damn, why is it so big? I couldn't believe I was in such an enormous city. I hope to dance. I want to live in this city for a long time. But the most important thing is, all I want to do is dance. I gotta say it again, what an amazing city! And it's all here, it's all happening, and it's all New York. Join us each week at this time, and I'll introduce you to more amazing New York artists. Until then, I'm Carl Christian. Take care.